Today is August the 9th, 2020. This is the Service Hero Show, 365 Days of Awesome, Celebrate Success Through Service. My name is Tamara Hunter. I am your host, and this is the show that tells the inspiring stories of those that are inspiring others. So let's do this. This is an incredibly special show, may I say. This Sunday, we have, uh, I am honored by our service hero, someone that has made such a difference in the world when it comes to being of service and helping us to make the world a better place. He was actually nominated by a dear friend of the show, a fellow service hero, Kim O'Neill. Kim O'Neill contacted me and said, Harrison needs to be on the show. Harrison is truly and always has been a service hero. We need to just formally recognize him as one. So Kim, I want to say thank you very much for making this happen and making the interdiction of Harrison Klein. Harrison Klein is well, anybody that has been around the world in a certain genre let's just say business, let's just say transformation, let's say inspiration, let's say making a difference, and yes, say service, will recognize this face, does know his name, will know his books, and knows his story. Yet, we are going to be sharing it this hour because truly, you are a service hero. Harrison, I am so excited to have you here with us today. Well, let me reciprocate the fact that this is an honor for me as well. So, and thank you, Kim, for introducing us. That's awesome. I love you, Kim. Uh, and you're going to be my new best friend, Tamara. So, <laughs> I love it. I'm I'm there already. You know, I'm wearing the pink already because you know it's it's as I was doing my research and everything. I'm like, we got we that energy, that that enthusiasm, the fun. And making the difference out there, I want to recognize as we start getting this show going that we do have friends of the show. We actually have uh, ambassadors for the nonprofit that I do run. And uh, Helene Wilson is one of my buddies and she's welcoming all of our buddies that are going to be coming to the show. She's saying hello to me and she is also saying hello to you Harrison Hi, I want to yes I wanted to do the same thing good good afternoon Helene out of Texas all right so Harrison you know it's like where do we start you you basically I mean I, I was looking at the picture behind you and you've got one that's directly behind you that that Yes, we're going to see a dear friend, another dear friend of the show, let's say, <laughs> Albert Einstein, and we've got the superheroes represented. And 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 every morning we've been talking about and we've been realizing that in the year 2020, right now, the second half, and that's why I'm dating the show instead of numbering them, is that we're in an opportunity of time that we can either do one of two things, right? We can either go on that hero's journey and 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 help with the transformation and do all the things that, that we know we can do, or we can be stuck right now and, and believe that, oh yeah, we have to stay at home. We have to do this, we have to do that. And that can become an attitude of being stuck. And you are the perfect person for being here and helping us to understand this in so many ways. And why is it that you have those heroes behind you? Well, you know, life is a hero's journey, right? So, I mean, we are effective to the extent that we take our hero's journey, that we find the courage to disassociate with what is dissatisfying to us and begin to take on a bigger vision of the world, a bigger vision of ourselves, a bigger vision of service, if you will, and begin to revolutionize what society has taught us into what we totally, truly are. And so 
in the process of the hero's journey, I've known this very, very well for a long time. I took a couple of them. I mean, I, I left home with no money back way when. Uh, <laughs> went homeless for a couple of weeks. No money, no, no nothing, just the clothes on my back. I was able to survive and come back and have more money than I left with. Anything would have been more money, but I but I came back with a decent amount of money. And, you know, I've been through the fact that I've been across the country just by myself. I've been to Europe by myself. I've done all kinds of hero's journey kinds of actions. But the biggest hero's journey is the internal is the internal play. And I I know very well that Joseph Campbell had a great mythology about the hero, uh, hero's journey. Also, uh, Herman Hess, when he wrote the book Siddhartha, talked very cleanly about the hero's journey. And if you'd like me to outline it, I can give you a very quick synopsis of what that is. I, I, I absolutely would love to because what we've been doing as you and I were talking, and, and I believe you know that every morning we've been getting out there and and getting moving. It's time to move. It's time for us to move forward. It's just time to take back our lives. And some were having a, an internal struggle with that concept. So we started with, okay, something as simple as make your bed. And then we start talking about the heroes and that we can be our own hero and we can tap into that hero. And since the fact that you have been absolutely helping others to not only by teaching it, but helping and encouraging others to take this message out there. And the proof is in the pudding. They've done it. They've they've been very successful doing it. You know this concept extremely well. I'd love for you to take us on the the, the hero's journey and like crib notes, I guess, is what you might call it. <laughs> Yeah, so um, very simply, the hero's journey always starts with the hero leaving home. That is a place where he's dissatisfied with the, the uh, um, circumstances and the, and the situations that he's in. He needs to disassociate himself because it's not a copable situation for him. So mm -hmm. he or she has to disassociate to, to come into something else and new. It's like a butterfly, caterpillar you know, eating its milkweed, then going into a cocoon, having to come out. So the first thing is you leave home, basically. You don't have to leave home physically, but it also helps to get into a new environment. But you leave you leave home internally. You disassociate with the things you know. And then the first thing that happens when you disassociate with the things you know is you are thrown into a new environment, and that mm -hmm. environment is full of adversity. It's full of adversity because it's unknown to you, because you are navigating in a world you have no idea about. So so what happens is the source gives you a lot of adversity in order to train you to be competent in a new paradigm, in a new kind of experience of you. And so it's like Navy SEAL training or Green Beret training or one of those kinds of things. Some people take it in terms of depression. Some people take it in terms of shock. Some people take it in terms of inspiration and, and spirituality. But they all, but almost everybody who wants to become an effective difference maker in this world takes it. It's a, it's a courageous act to leave home with nothing. So you disassociate mm -hmm. yourself from everything, and you are now going to go into a new living situation. So the world converges on you. And it's, it, it narrows your focus in order for you to be competent. So in the, in the old paradigm at home, you are scattered because you're, you're dissociated. And so you're scattered. You're, your focus is everywhere and everything else. But in the new paradigm, in order to survive, you have to get focused. So you have to go into convergence. From the convergence state, though, once you become competent, once you learn the lessons of this new experience, you then become something different. You start to transform yourself. And as you transform yourself and you learn the competence, the world then opens up in another kind of way, like a, like a flower blooming, and then gives you everything you want. And that is the hero's journey. And I've taught people like artists and sculptors to do these kinds of things. I've taught people that are, you know, farmers. I've taught people that are in the transformational field to do these things. And as you take the journey, you start to make life cool again. You know, it's going from the dissatisfaction into the confidence, into the into the ecstasy of living, into the experience of total manifestation 
at will. And there's a whole new life that it, that expounds when you take the hero's journey because now the hero gets to command what after he's done his journey, he gets to command whatever it is he wants because he's been of master master service to a lot and, and, and whatever. And then he's tweaking this mastery into the highest potential that he can possibly find. I think that kind of summarizes it. That that summarizes that was great. Summarizes it beautifully and very you know, and I love I love the piece of the focus, you know, and how in when you were at home, as you're putting it, that you can be scattered and we all have been there. And in fact, many are possibly feeling that way right now because some of the focus that they had before is has been taken away right now. You know, they, they can't go to work or they can't take the kids to school. And now they've got the kids at home and all the different elements, the scatteredness of the situation possibly is creating that 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 element of, oh, my goodness, now what? And so when I love the fact that you say, hey, you don't have to necessarily leave home. You have to. But it is a state of being within and then finding that focus to then be able to come out and have the flower blooming. And that is beautiful and very I would think many would be encouraged to say, wow, if I was to put that into practice, think of how I can come out of 2020 going into 2021 and anything and all things are possible. So the, so the journey has to do with creating a new ver, new world vision, either for yourself or for the world or for whatever. So right. have one vision when we're at home. And then when that doesn't work for us, you know, we have to begin to formulate a new vision for everything else. And vision is one of the central tenets to everything that you want to have happen in this world. If you don't have a vision, Solomon in the Bible says the people, you know, without vision, the people perish. So, you know, it's an amazing experience to create a new vision and the details of a new vision that you can implement. And the hero's journey forces you for survival's sake to focus on what the new vision is, to find it, to focus, to go deeply inside and to deal with all the adversities that come up. It's a really dramatic experience for a lot of people. So, you know, I went through it. Oh, uh, chemo buddies. OK, hi. <laughs> hi yeah, 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 yeah. Get that back. Uh huh. And then uh, halfway through SEALs training, I was checking the gear list and schedule for the next day, thinking they were training me to be a butler. <laughs> Sense of humor there, Ruben. <laughs> You know, in, in that kind of a service, you know, butlers can be heroes too. So, you know. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It, it's who and what you decide to serve with the being that you are, that you decide you are. And there's not, you know, what, part of what I want to do with this world is I want to change the idea that, you know, um, there is life and then that we are just in it. That has nothing to do with the hero's journey. It's a negative experience. It's not just there is life and, and we are in it. There is life that we can sculpt, that we can, in fact, make what we want from it. And if we don't understand that and we don't apply that, that idea, we don't get anywhere in this world, at least not anywhere of any significance. And so we have to we have to change the paradigm. And I want to live in a world that has a backbone of love and a backbone of, of love, not a backbone of, you know, competition and aggression and, you know, getting material things. Oh, that's there. I want a world that has feminine energy prioritized over masculine energy because feminine energy basically is the nurturing energy. So I want to live in a world where we nurture each other, not compete with each other in order to get advantage, dominance advantage. So the male paradigm has gone on for 7,000 years now. It's time and we're in a pendulum and the female energy is emerging in a much greater sense right now. And what I want to do is create a radically different kind of world. I want to live in a world that has a backbone, that has a backbone of I want to help, that I want to, mm -hmm. yes. I want to give. I want, you know, Neil Young does it. I, I want to live, I want to give. <laughs> a world... Yeah. That doesn't just solve comfort and convenience problems, but that makes a difference to other people. 
So, you know, there's a whole new experience. I want to make life cool again, not suffering. Mm -hmm. I don't want to, I don't want suffer. I want to make life cool. You know, I want to give life like women give life. They're about giving life to other people, giving life to males, giving life to babies, giving life to, to other women, you know, uh, not always. Sometimes <laughs> females are. <laughs> in heavy competition with each other, but I want to step away from the idea of beauty, beauty and being, you know, connected to intelligence, and that is what a woman is for. I want to get, an, I, I want to come into a world that has women being, you know, a force of nature, this life-giving thing to be the appreciated part of life, and not the thing that is who gets the most amount of toys, you know, right. yeah. who kicks the most amount of butt, you know, <laughs> you know that. <laughs> Is the paradigm out there? Who kicks the most amount of butt gets the most amount of toys? Blah blah blah. You know, it's a bullshit paradigm. I don't want it in that. You know, um, that's a male vision, and and that's a, a, a flawed premise about who we should be. I believe in limitlessness. You know, I believe in in, in being trained to be limitless and not being trained to think small. You know, so there's a gigantic. There's a gigantic promise in that when you begin to take that on. Yes, uh, you know, do the impossible. I'm possible, all that kind of stuff. So, you know. Oh, I, lo I love it. I, I found this one, too, of your stuff, you know. I have PMA, positive mental attitude. I'm positive, I'm mental, and I know I have attitude. You know, and, and <laughs> I love that face. And, you know, you got to, a little cheeky there, but still, you know, it, it's a matter of that that I am possible and you are tapped into what it is that you want. Definitely. You are there. You're out there. You're training. You're helping. You you have multiple different ventures that you're associated with. You've been associated with. You've created and and helped others create. And so you're t you're coming from a place of of and, and I want people to understand this that may not that may not know you yet and are learning and knowing you now they know you now and that is that you you really have been there and done that and you know what you're talking about and you're doing it in a way that you're bringing the love back to us all and saying hey you know i want to live in a life that's fun i want to live in a life that has the love and we can do this and you are out on a mission literally to make it happen throughout the world aren't you Yes, and I want women and children to run the world. I don't want I don't want male aggressors aggressors to run the world. You know, I want I want a revolution in education. I want a revolution in values. I want a revolution in reprioritizing things. You know, and I think that's where we need to go. And I think that's where we are headed. And this COVID thing that we talk about, and you know, that is forcing us into introspection, greater introspection introspection slows us down to take a look at what our real values are. And so this is all part of the plan. I believe that source has a plan for everything. And I'm not religious by that way, but I, but I am spiritual by that way. And I got to believe that source knows what he's doing and that he directs the energy of things overall collectively and sometimes intervenes personally. But for the most part, he is a, he's a director that fulfills whatever is necessary. And so I think for thousands of years, men and women have been praying for a peaceful existence that allows us to thrive without violence. And I think this COVID is the, is the culmination of a lot of that that condenses the whole world into, let's look at what's really going on. Let's look at who we really are instead of let's look at just accumulating things to make our, our lives more convenient. So. I love it. I, I love it. Um, you know, I am joy. I am effective. I am joy. And and it's go ahead. Yeah. And I want to move forward without fucking permission from anybody. I don't need permission. <laughs> I want to move forward without needing permission from anybody. You know, that's incredible. The more we open our hearts, the less we have to go to our minds for real answers because our hearts have that intelligence. Right. Right. The, the heart is the center of our really intelligence. The brain uh, is a tool, but if we, uh, the brain is meant to follow the heart, and heart being metaphorically, but the brain is meant to follow the heart, not the heart to follow the brain. 
And so, you know, when we open up our hearts, we have compassion for all. We have, you know, a, a leverage for a love. We have this space of, of real, uh, um, you know, ending of confusion, ending of distraction, ending of disorganization, ending of limitly, limiting beliefs and limiting experiences. You know, we accelerate our place into into higher quantum energy. You know, it's an amazing thing. So the heart is this is an organ of fire. It's not an organ of uh, of just you know keeping us alive. It's an organ of fire, and it has and it's what creates the fire within us. So yeah has an intelligence of its own. I mean, heart math has shown that heart has intelligence. It's not yeah, absolutely. In fact, I don't know if Skip's still here, but Skip actually did um, a, a, a documentary that is on Gaia TV, and he did a lot of uh, interviews with uh, some of those that are involved in the, the whole sacred journey of the heart. And 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 he, he was the, the director for that film. And I don't know if you're still here, Skip. If you are, I'd love to hear what you're what you're thinking. And um, so, so we know now that you know your stuff. You you know the the hero's journey. You're really helping us to understand that our heart really, are, you know, that we really need to be leading with the heart. And yes, women and and children. Yeah, I love it. You know, let's let's get out there and and help. Oh yeah, he's here. Yes. Okay. Um, the the uh, I'd love to hear a little bit more about some of the people that you were involved with, with uh, the sacred journey of the heart, Skip, and get involved in this a little bit through comments. That would be wonderful. Um, the the idea here also, I, I want to go into the fact that here you have a series of books that, uh, I'm just going to put up a couple of them, uh, that that are messages and of light. And as I was reading about what it is that your books have to offer us, it, it, it's like you have such an understanding of, of so many of the elements and you are able to then break them down and so that we can understand them, those that maybe have not been in this world so much, um, they they have an interest, let's say, in transformation or or in visualization or in, in any of the different elements that are involved. But they they maybe haven't been involved at an extent of of true learning and and knowing. And you you you're out there speaking now virtually i mean you've been on a number of virtual stages recently you have traveled all over the world and in a few moments we're going to get deeper into even that you started a whole movement <laughs> and how that all happened and and a, a group that that i had no idea i i was already impressed and then when I when you were sharing, oh yeah, this is how it happened. I'm like, wow, how cool is that? Because I love, I love learning how. Because the whole idea here is anything and everything is I'm possible. That is absolutely the truth, and you are living example of exactly that. So Skip is saying, uh, hundred and ten percent with Harrison. Yep, the longest different distance from fear to travel is eighteen inches from the heart, to, uh, the head to the heart. And uh, then he is sharing. I think that that's probably that. It might be. I don't know, Skip, if that that link is sacred journey of the heart and possibly your intro to it but he did a lot with i don't want to say it wrong but some of the people that were involved in the heart institute or mapping or something like this heart math, hmm? heart math. okay there you go yeah yeah so okay so you you are on a mission I'm on a and and that is to change millions of people all over the globe and you're also very involved in the the business piece of things that's what makes you very fascinating also because you i mean you're a dollar and cents kind of guy when i saw that you were teaming 
with in some of the ventures with someone that I know extremely well and have shared a stage with uh, a dear friend of mine and uh, a fellow service hero that I'm like, okay, this is an interesting pair. Uh, anybody that knows Chris Salem knows what I'm talking about, you know, because this is a, Chris Salem is, a, you know, he's a businessman. He goes into, you know, he teaches in everything from police departments to big corporations to you know on and on and on and and you're a transformation you know heart and soul kind of guy and and then when we start talking you're like yeah i helped this person to take their message and they they were able to go out there and change the world and then their business was able to get to this place so you're working with entrepreneurs as well as the and and you're showing that it's it can all be interconnected, can't it? It is all interconnected. It's just not, that's not a possibility. There is no doubt that it's complete. That is what enlightened the Buddha back in the original day. It is he was sitting under a tree and he realized the interconnection of all things. At that moment, he became enlightened. So as we realize that viscerally, we become into an awakened state and our intelligence grows at a much quicker accelerated uh, experience because we are now in a place of alert totality or full integrated living, if you will. We're not fragmentary about anything. We are fully integrated as all the parts. Everything is simultaneous. Everything is interconnected. If you have a thought about buying a car, there's a, simultaneously there's a guy out there uh, having thoughts about building a car and a guy having thoughts about, you know, racing a car, a guy having thoughts about selling a car, a guy having thoughts, and you're all connected. You're all in a web of connection. And that is part of the enlightenment process. And that is what enlightened the Buddha at the very first time. And then he began to spread that message that we are, you know, in the here and now. And the here and now is a quantum field. He didn't call it that back then. But, you know, we now recognize it as the quantum field, which is the behavior of spirit. The behavior of spirit has this incredible mesh of interconnections of all things. And it's all simultaneously. It's all happening eternally, eternally, forever in the very, this very moment that we're in. And it's just, it's all movement. And, and you know, this is what gets me so excited. And I know many others are feeling it too, that this is where when you start really understanding that it comes down to something that we can understand and hold, such as even like, okay, you're talking about a penny or, you know, the, the, the idea of commerce, the idea of being an entrepreneur, and then the idea of that, it's infinite that the universe that the that that there the enlightenment and the interconnectedness and that my mind can then connect with someone else because i'm having this thought and then it's like that we can go into what they're now calling the 5d world because yes we have more of the the terminology the modern day terminology to concepts that like you were saying the enlightenment of the buddha that was under the tree and said okay here's here's here i got it i got it now i'm getting it and 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 we've just given it a lot more of kind of cool names and updated terms yet it's all the same information correct same information yes but it but it also is interwoven and interlayered uh in in a number of different uh, kind of perspectives. So um, every dimensional layer is a perspective. So we're talking about a 5D world, which is the, the world of light. So the first dimension is a, is a point, right? Like, uh, here I am, it's me, my wants, my needs, my desires, like a newborn baby, right? And that many people never ever grow out of that all their all their lives my wants my needs my desires you know it's about them second dimension is, is like in mathematics it's a line right which is nothing but a series of points that are next to each other a line is a series of points so you know what's on one side of you you know what's on the other side you know what's in front and what's in back my family my not my family my friends my enemies my uh my goodness my my dark side blah 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 so you, it's a it's total 
acceptance of the, the, the a total awareness of, you know, the duality of what's on either side of us and up and down. The third dimension is the dimension that we live in, which is where we combine height, width, and depth, right? So that's, that's we get to see a little bit into the future. We get to see a little bit into the past. So this, that's this lifetime of this flesh. So we get to see a little forward. We get to see a little backward, okay? We also have height. What, what, how deep can we go and how high can we experience things? And then how wide, who are the people that are supporting us? So that's the third dimension. So it's a dimension of, you know, uh, of uh, solidity, if you will, duty and, and, and obligation and all those other things so that we, we learn from the duty and the obligation. The fourth dimension is the dimension of time, right? That is the dimension in which, you know, things um, are... Um, broken down into segments. So time, most people believe time to be successive moments on a clock uh, moving forward. But that's not what time is at all. Time, in, in point of fact, the deepest part of time is the understanding that it, they, time is our, a series of sensations in your body that move you from one event to another. And without the body moving Without the body getting those sensations, you are stuck in an, in a non-experience. So okay. it, it's a body sensation. The, the fifth dimension that we're talking about, the 5D, is the dimension of light, right? So now what does light do? So we're going into the fifth dimension. Light splits darkness. So all the darkness that has been hidden and covert for so long is now coming to the fore and it's a great time for for those people who are in the who are in the ascension process who are who are looking to grow and who are looking to transcend you know the dark experiences of the third dimension so the duality of the third dimension so now light splits darkness so now you become enlightened no burdens very little burden very little uh, weight in terms you feel your body feels weightless and you feel like your total awareness okay then you move to the sixth dimension the sixth dimension is creativity pure creativity whereby you know now you're creating life you begin to um, do things that you've never been taught, nobody's ever seen before, that is strictly original, the way you, the way you write a sentence, the way you, uh, it's everything is signature, the way you wash a dish is signature, the way you cut the grass is signature, nobody else on earth can do it that way, that's the dimension, of, that's the sixth dimension, the seventh dimension is influence, now you take all that creativity and now you spread it out to as many people as you can, and it's like a great author whose book influences 50,000 or 100,000 or a million people that he's never going to meet he's never going to have any interaction with he doesn't know but he has influence with has changed his energy has changed their lives on the simultaneity scale and then, the, then the, the dimension above that is the is the god dimension that's when you begin to realize your your godness your your um your you are the law of what you experience. So when you say, I will be a best-selling author, or I will change the world, you know, that's exactly what happens because you are the God experience. So it's the highest value within you, and then it becomes the highest value beyond influence. So. Wow. Okay, so as you're explaining all of these, all of the dimensions here, what, what came to my mind is that then you have been living I'm sure in in at the very top, but I'm thinking when you were breaking it down, the seventh level, the influence, you have been there for a long time in that you're you have influenced a lot of people that I know, including Kim, who nominated you to be here on this show. And and with the of course i shared the books there I, I don't know if you want to go into that the your books and and talk about what is in those a little deeper before we get into some of the i really do want to get into because i did not know this until we were talking what you shared with me right before we went live uh but before however before we get into that the books i really do want to go into them um you here talk about being the rock star of our own lives and you are helping people to understand that they all do have their own hero's journey your books a segment of four why is it that you decided to do that i mean tell us about them 
They're simply channeled messages that I get from source at different times, and I just write them down and put them together, compile them in a book, and just said, <laughs> this is on love, this is on joy, this is on work, this is on happiness, this is on uh, you know, uh, depression, this is on fear, this is on whatever. So, yeah. so you know, these are the messages that I get, and I write them down, and I just give them to somebody to compile them and put them in a book. <laughs> well, I'll tell you though, and then you make it sound so very simple. However, when I was, when I was looking them up and found them, I was intrigued, so intrigued because, you know, we all need those messages and, and we need to be able to get them from someone that we can trust, someone that, that possibly if they're not getting them themselves or possibly maybe be encouraged that they actually can and possibly are getting them themselves, but maybe not hearing them. Can that be the case? Sure. Well, you know, um, what we experience in the highest forms that move us is some form of wisdom. And wisdom, basically, yes, I see women are dominating financial stuff. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Okay, yeah. What we experience in the form that moves us basically, um, is, is one form or another of wisdom. And what is wisdom? It is the things you've learned devoid of your emotional experience. You've had to go through an emotional experience to learn things deeply so that you could then generate that information as an emotional experience for other people, but you don't have the emotional experience anymore. You've paid your dues. So... You know, and that's how it works. So once you once you separate from the emotional portion of your delivery, then you can make that an emotional experience for someone else at the highest level because that's something that you have been able to live through and pass through your body and through your mind for for a purpose bigger than you. So that's Got it. Go ahead. Keep going. Yeah. So, you know, uh, basically it's a principle um that takes um, fragility, uh, fragile people and fragile things, and, you know, makes them solid. It makes them, it, it fills in the gaps of what is missing. So, so as we channel things, it's about what, what others have known that you don't know. And it's an intuitive connection with source that then passes through you so that you can have impact on others. So, uh, and not just impact on others, but also impact on yourself, you know? Right, right. So, and, and so what I'm hearing here is when you can get to a point where you're, you're divested of, of the outcome, when you are, it's coming through you and coming, you can then have this where you're going to be sharing it out with others and, and that there's, you're open you're open to the experience and to hearing because when you when you get to that point where you're you're not holding on so hard so many people are holding on to and i you know i don't even know sometimes what it it can be that they're holding on to what is comfortable maybe they're holding on to the fear maybe they're holding on to what they know however it's maybe not what's serving them we are taught to be small, to think small, to be con contracted. You know, we are taught that, that it's a dangerous world. And, and in some ways it is a dangerous world. But you know what? The greater your intelligence, the less danger you, could, you experience. Because you don't have to put up with things that are beneath your ability to handle. The greatest thing about becoming in the fourth dimension, fifth dimension and above, is that you absolutely know without a shadow of a doubt that you're equal to the challenges of life that life yeah. gives you know, and that is part of the enlightenment process. So we call that confidence, if you will, but it's also enlightenment. It's another way of saying enlightenment. And it's another way of saying awakening. You know, we have energy that knows we're, we're, we're competent to any challenge that is given us. So. I love it. I love it. I love it. In fact, um, Skip is saying, how come no college degree in wisdom? I don't know. There should be. That's part of what we're trying to do. I think 
part uh we need a revolution in education you know the the paradigm has been education has been about regurgitating information at this particular point in the world i don't believe in regurgitating information it doesn't do anybody any good to imitate or, or emulate somebody else what does people really good is to come from the heart from what really is your experience and what you've learned from your experience and so the values of education need to come from the inside out and guess what when you when you have the the real value of wanting to learn. Basically, you go to the best schools, you get the best grades, you have the best mentors, you do the most amount of good work in the world, and you have the highest amount of influence. So, you know, if we change that paradigm of education from regurgitating information to, you know, what is the gift that you've been given that you love to be inspired by and can inspire others with, you know, the world will be a very, very different place. And I absolutely believe 30 to 40 to 50 years from now, Every school child will understand that, know that, and talk about it and become that gift. So just as children now know computers, you know, with the age of three and four and five, they know more than some, you know, than many adults do in their in their prime. You know? <laughs> Isn't that the truth? And you know what you're talking about because you're the CEO of the World Leadership Academy that and and you are you know, 16 years uh, uh, in this this world plus, uh, this in the education and and helping those that have that brightest intelligence to get going and making the difference here in this world. I, I you know, if you want to touch on that for a moment, and then we'll go into where I want to go next because <laughs> Skip, you, I don't know if. You, that was that was an enlightened and and an awakened comment to, to transition into uh, what absolutely Harrison Harrison knows what he's talking about because he's out there doing it. You want to mention that? You mean the World Leadership Academy or, or yeah 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 World Leadership Academy is is a, a special place. It's a very very elitist. I'm sorry to say elitist concept, but it is for genius people, kids, that we're grooming to become world leaders. So, you know, Nobel and, and and the way it works is we are taking people who know their gifts, who are at the very highest levels of intelligence that uh, need to find self-actualization. They have the intelligence but aren't quite self-actualized in every way. And then we, we train them with the greatest mentors, living mentors in the world. So we're talking about championship athletes, super, uh, super spiritual people. We're talking about uh, Nobel Prize winners. We're talking about uh, people who have you know, done tremendous work in art and in fiction and in science and all those other things. We find the right person, one person, Person, one world leader that can take on a kid to groom them into these higher places. That's what the World Leadership Academy is about. So I love it's, it. It's a very special, and the thing is that once we train a kid into mentoring in proximity with somebody who's already a world leader, they become a world leader and then they influence out, the ripples go out to all all sorts of levels and and, and pass by, you know, incredible uh, numbers of people and touch incredible lives, numbers of lives and all that. So it is a change, changing of the world experience. Yeah. And, and it's so critically needed, so critically oh, needed. I mean, this is the uh, yeah. We're in the leverage moment. Yeah, we are. And thank you for doing that. I, I want to get into this because I this kind of just really was exciting for me because I love this kind of stuff. This is the stuff I geek out on. I'll be honest with you. And and because I asked you about the the Evolutionary Business Council of which I was at a meeting. That's how I met Kim O'Neill. Yeah. And and so when she uh, introduced me to you and nominated you, I'm thinking, okay, yeah, this makes total sense. So I'm asking you, like, oh, so you're a member? <laughs> you're the founder. You're the one that came up with the concept. I'm the one who came up with the concept, and then Teresa de Grobois took it and ran with it. We were sitting around, five of us were sitting around uh, in a discussion in Canmore uh, <laughs> Uh, Canada, which is right outside of Cal uh, Calgary, I guess, uh, and that was ten years ago. And we were discussing the fact that there that we are working in the transformational field. We're all working in some form of transformational field, mm -hmm. and um, 
I had been nominated to the Transformational Leadership Council, which was run by uh, Jack Canfield and was at that time Mark Victor Hansen, no longer. But, you know, all the people from The Secret were, got together and they wanted to create a leadership council. And I had been nominated to go in, but somehow I was voted out. They didn't accept me as that. And I said, you know, can I use my square word? Fuck them. I just, <laughs> yeah. they don't need these guys. They're not the only ones on the planet. There are a lot of young, hungry, you know, really bright people who are making a difference in the world. Let's put them together. We don't need to do that. So, you know. I get it. And, and you know, um, there's not just one path to where we want to go. There are thousands and the paths are infinite, you know. Mm-hmm. So um, there is God in this talk. Yes, Helene, thank you. <laughs> so, you know, and the whole process is, is, a, is, is such that we collaborate. Again, the idea is to bring people together, entrepreneurs in, in the Evolutionary Business Council, to bring entrepreneurs together to make a difference with each other, to help each other get their messages out, to help each other hone their messages, to help, to help each other you know, become uh, beacons of light to many, many, many other people and, and things. And that's what the concept was. And then we formed a board. Uh, and I've been on it for 10 years. I just moved into what they call the Wisdom Council. It's a graduation from the from the board. So new so new members, new members of the uh, Evolutionary Business Council can take board seats. But now we in, we're the, sort of a a steering committee, if you will, and we generate policy for the rest. So so we work on concepts and, and all that instead of the day to day operations. So which is anybody that doesn't understand what the evolutionary business council is you guys need to because when when i went as a guest i i have to say i was really blown away because here you have some of the most in <laughs> enlightened business oriented giving driven yet kind i mean you have full 360 degree individuals that are some of the most um i I, I mean the the they they have it going on guys they really do they're so well uh um they're an integrated thought leadership across the world exactly international across the world and so accepting they are that you know you really have no idea who you may be because there was a lot of teaming exercises and all these wonderful events within and you may be sitting next to someone that that is absolutely at the top of their game and they are going to be so into how can i serve you how can i help you how can I help make the world a better place by helping you with what you're doing? And you, they are all about how do you, you know, give and then you can ask. And I absolutely, it was like, okay, I have found my peeps. I, 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 I love the concept. I love the unconditional love. I love the agape love that's being shared. And they had an exercise that there was a book that they said, okay, we are going to show you guys today how you can take this book and we are going to make it a bestseller by the end of this meeting. And so they showed how it all worked. So it was not just a, if you will, you know, oh yes, I'm going to learn about this. And one of the things I also want to say, Harrison, that will forever, ever mean something to me personally is that i knew when i started my journey for my nonprofit that there would be an unlocking of an answer that i needed i needed a personal answer of how i could stop a disease that was going through my family generationally and i knew that there had to be a way to be able to have that stop that that it could be changed it was at that event that was the very first time that I ever heard that there was something out there that could actually do that. And that, and, and so it took me down a road of discovery and it was because of that council that the 
I, what my mission for my own personal family to get out there in the world, the answer came going to that meeting. It was huge. It was huge. So I want to say thank you for your inspiration and thank you for the work that it personally changed my life. We're all in this together, baby. So, you know, everybody heals everybody else. And the better you, mm -hmm. better your knowledge, the better healing comes. Absolutely. So I, that's why I wanted to take this moment and make sure we had the time to say when I realized your role, <laughs> it was like, oh, my goodness, because when I was going through my cancer, I knew that there was an answer to stop it, you know, cut the cord. I didn't know that what that was, but now I do. And so, you know, thank you so very much. And yes, we are in this together. And Mikey Adam Cohen's like, OK, I want him. I want him on. And he's got a big stage thing going on. Uh, and he's like, OK, I, I want I want to talk to him. So, oh, uh, let's see. Agape love is incredible. Yes. And so I'm catching up to everybody. Um, so where are you going from here? Well, OK, I'm, I'm changing the world. I'm one of those crazy mm -hmm. whose who's, whose dream is big enough to change the world. And that means that we. I want to again. I'm moving. I want to. I want to shift the needle away from this male aggression, you know, convenience, uh, competition about who can, has the most amount of toys to who has the most amount of love, life, and love of other people. And we want to move this in a way that creates new realities for people. And I mean, really new realities. I'm not talking about a tweak on the old reality, just like the mm -hmm. world. Uh, Academy is not a tweak on, you know, the same kind of paradigm that has been 200 years of, of the same educational with a little bit of tweak here and a little bit of tweak. No, we want a new paradigm. We want a, something that has a, a real, you know, uh, um, uh, promise to give an accelerated learning. So to speed up learning, to speed up life, to be a woman who uh, is a uh, able to use quantum mechanisms to be, uh, you know, quantum mechanism is the really the behavior of spirit and spirit can do anything. You know, we're just, this is, this flesh body is only one part of us. It's in fact, it's a small part of us. And once we know that we are so much more than that and we can navigate the invisible realms, then healing becomes a much quicker, much easier thing. And we don't have to go through the same kinds of, you know, step by step by step by step things that can be instantaneous. Right, right, right. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Um, I, I'm bringing this image up because it's uh, just, you know, we, there's so many of us that are in this, you know, like the whole idea. And you're talking about this. And, and we've been talking about the tour of love. And and and, and actually one of our, our uh, leadership came up with this, even the image. And I'm thinking, oh, my goodness, people are being called to what it is that you are out there, you've done it before, you've, you've created a whole shift, the Evolutionary Business Council, evidence of that. Now, this changing of the, if you will, the guard, the old way of doing it, the, you know, okay, it, it, it's out of here, we're kicking it to the curb, we're, we, there's so much more, You're, our minds and our bodies, I would think, should be able to, at the light of speed, at, at a, a, a desire of okay now i can now do this there, it should be instantaneous we should be able to have the ability and the confidence as you say the enlightenment and the confidence that yes we can make this possible all things i'm possible all things are possible yes right? i want to change the paradigm from from improving who we are, because that's a, that's a debilitating paradigm that we have to make ourselves better. I don't give two shits about making people better or, ha or us being better. I want to make each person different because that's where, that's where the juice is. It's not about making people better. It's about making people different, being able to find the difference, the differentiation. And then that's where the juice comes really big time. So, when so how, can, how can people join you in this this this? I mean, how can how can we help to make this happen? What is the next step? Well, I, there are many different steps. So, I mean, um, if you want to buy something from me, I have a program called the I Am Effect, and that uh, is a 
a pathway, it's a roadmap to higher consciousness that, that impacts your internal experience. So it is the ending of limiting beliefs, it is the ending of confusion, the ending of distraction, the ending of disorganization. There are ways to end everything. So when you're, disor when you're, when you're confused, the ending of, uh, of confusion is to set priorities. When you're distracted, the ending of distraction is to, uh, is to uh, find uh, something that inspires you. When you're when you're disorganized, the ending is to the 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 results or the uh, um, uh, uh, the, the I'm, I'm blanking on the word I want, but uh, but the but the the end result of of that situation is to create a different sort of. Uh, uh, um, connection to things is to, to create skills and things like that. Mm -hmm. So distraction. If you create skills, you 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 start to walk away from distractions. If you create, uh, um, uh, if you're working on confusion, if you set priorities, it ends your confusion. If you if you work on disorganization, it is about pulling together and focusing in one particular kind of area, and then you can spread it out, but one at a time, one thing at a time. So. Go ahead. Working on a pathway to higher consciousness is the answer to business difficulties, is the answer to, you know, personal difficulties, relationship difficulties, health difficulties, all kinds of things. So the I am effect is about giving you that roadmap to get there. And it goes very deeply to both into the intellectual, but also more importantly, into the emotional. It's the ending of limiting beliefs. So yeah. we we change in only three ways. These are only, there's no other way to change. We change by creating a different self-image. We change by creating a new belief system. That's we have to we have to discard the old belief system in order to change. We have to discard the we can't change our self-image. We can only create a new one. And then mm -hmm. we by we train we change by shock when we are at threshold level and we can take no more. We just go bam no more. I'm done with this. And when I'm done with this, you change instantaneously. So now you're on it. Mm -hmm. So those are the ways we change. And this is these are the ways to understand it. These are the ways to get there. These are the ways to create emotional commitment to your higher change. Love it. I'm going to take myself down from the line. I'm going to give you a, a moment to address everybody with a nugget, something that you're feeling inspired for, you know, to, to share. And then I'll bring myself back up and then we'll close out the show. Okay. So you want you want me to give somebody a nugget? <laughs> yeah, I want you to. Yeah, a nugget, a nugget, a, like inspirational thought, something that you just like a, a moment that you just want to say. Okay, I'm feeling impressed to say this, uh, and 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 then I'm going to come back and we'll close it out. Okay, so I want everybody to know that they can raise the roof of the universe. They can actually raise the the expansion of the universe. There's only two reasons why we are here as human beings. One is to experience joy. So life is going to be about fun. Otherwise, it has no value for us because to be too serious and to experience suffering is is the wrong purpose of life and the wrong way of life. And the second thing is about expansion, which is growth. Everything in this universe is going somewhere. It has a destination. So we call that a destiny, but everything is going somewhere. So we get to choose how to experience joy. We get to choose how to experience our expansion. That's our free will. But those are the reasons we come. And so if we focus on those two main things, our joy and our expansion, then we have the leverage, we have the, the diving board from which to open up the roof of the universe and to, and to raise the roof and to allow much more cosmic energy in. And uh, I think everybody can do that. It's not that difficult. It's a matter of just opening up ourselves to full integration living and, you know, uh, um, working with principles that inspire us. Uh, I don't know how long she wants me to go on. I, I got you, you. You did it. You did it. It was wonderful. And, you know, and, and I appreciate it. And Kim said it well. Uh, more Harrison Klein wisdom. Or, you know, she got. Here we go. There you go. <laughs> and just felt it right. Okay, go ahead. And so, you know, as we close today, I want to say thank you before I close out the show for being here with us. I, I, as I said in the very beginning, it truly is an honor to have 
you here and sharing your wisdom and and sharing the the light and the fact that we all are in this like you said we're all in this together baby i love that we're all in this together we rise together and we fall together but we are rising together and you know we have to come from the space of already being there not from the space of trying to get there not Absolutely. not improvement just being different that's right. I love it. And I'm all about being different. That's that works in my world. So as we close today, today, August the 9th, 2020, the Service Hero Show 365 Days of Awesome celebrate success through service. We have definitely made the case today in this show that you are, yes, Harrison Klein, you are a service hero. You were nominated by Kim O'Neill and you, we, we went over everything that you've been sharing with the world for your life. And you have educated and served us that much more this hour. And so that there are those that did not know who you are, are going to be following. And yes, we are, uh, I'm possible that we are the difference. We are today in that place that we are bringing in that dimension to make the world a better place. Let's all do this together. And like he said, we're in this together, baby. I love that. <laughs> so thank you for being here and being well, the superhero that you are. I give your listeners and your and your viewers a free gift. So Absolutely. You know, and you know, I'm not going to tell you what it is. It's going to be a surprise. But if you go to proabundance, uh, proabundance uh, dot com. Um, that is my email address. Just just write in the subject line "gift" and I will I will give you. I will send you something. Proabundance. It's proabundance at gmail dot com. Proabundance at gmail dot com. If anybody wants to put that in the comments, that would be wonderful. Proabundance gmail dot com. All right. Thank you so very much for spending this time with us today. Uh, it's been my great pleasure to talk with you, work with you, to connect with you and all you guys. At some point, when all this is over, we're going to get uh, group hugs together and then raise the roof. I love it. Let's And have some fun doing it. <laughs> all right. And all the buddies, tonight is game night in the closed group. So join us at 5 o'clock Pacific, 8 o'clock Eastern. We'll see you there. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody.